So good morning. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Um, today, I'm very privileged with Daniel Davis. And Daniel is the community leader for the APAC region for EOS Worldwide. He's also a certified EOS implementer, and he's worked with about 80 clients of the EOS system. So welcome, Dan. Thanks, Deb. Nice to be here and joining you. Yeah, lovely to see you. Hey, um, Dan, you've got a very, very interesting journey, haven't you? Because you actually bought EOS into the APAC region. Would you like to share a little bit about your journey? And you were, of course, a business owner for many years. Um, would you like to share a little bit about your journey and where you got to, and perhaps within that, share a professional and a personal best? Sure. Uh, so I'll probably kick off with the personal and business best because I know I'll forget otherwise. So personal <laughs> best has uh, been my lap times at the track lately. So as you know, I like my car racing and motorbike racing. And yes. uh, it's nice to be back at the track after uh, the last year or so of having the lockouts. Um, so that's been nice. And uh, Business Best has been just the client's success that I've seen occurring and uh, their ability to adapt to all the changes that have been coming around over the last year and continue actually as we speak. We're back in a lockdown here in Sydney. So yeah. they're my uh, personal and business best. Um, how I got involved with this, uh, bringing EOS to here, if I was to give you the fast version, I yeah. started the first business when I was 21, um, a small IGA supermarket up in the Blue Mountains. Uh, worked very hard uh, growing that store, opened it in the morning at five, worked through till 11 at night and uh, lived at the store for about three years and over time. Um, I learned every conceivable mistake, I guess, uh, as you go. And uh, thankfully, by the end of three years, it was a really successful store. And um, that allowed me to continue on doing some other things. So over the years, I've been in property development, uh, also building out other stores, uh, other retail stores, um, some professional service space, uh, B2B work that I've also had. And, uh, and I guess how I stumbled into this space was after investing into a friend's company, and I didn't do any due diligence. Uh, he was one of my best friends from school. Um, but the uh, short story was I lost a few million dollars in that venture. Yep. And uh, it led me to, to seek help. Um, I, I wasn't sure how to fix the problem. Tried a few different uh, business coaches and advisors without a great deal of luck, actually. It was quite frustrating until I came across uh, one lady. She helped me really, really, uh, really well. Um, and I actually found my passion of wanting to understand the science of business and help the business owners out there. So I ended up buying out her business and growing it. And uh, then I came across EOS. I read Traction after a, um, a person sitting in an audience, actually. I was speaking at an event and somebody came up and said, hey, you've got this twin brother called Gino Wicklin, <laughs> great Michigan. You, you look like him and you sound like him and you need to check out this book called Traction. And uh, so... Uh, I read the book on a flight and uh, never looked back. I thought it was just fantastic. It was a simplified version of what I was doing in yep. my consulting firm and uh, flew to the US, met the team, fell in love, I guess, and uh, brought the brand down here to the APAC region. And that was uh, about six years ago now. So since then, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of um, growing the brand here and uh, training about 25 other people other implementers like yourself and the rest of our uh, crew down here um, that go out and help people every day. So that's the fastest version I can give of the uh, journey so far. So what was it that you fell in love with specifically? The simplicity, the yeah. simplicity, you know, and we, uh, we share this with clients, simple, not easy. And uh, I think there's a really powerful takeaway there. Um, if we look at, it's interesting right now, we're in a, uh, a lockdown here in, in Sydney and uh, we, we, when, when you look at some statistics, what I find intriguing is that the, the largest uh, health issue um, that we have in the world is you know, heart disease and uh, associated problems, diabetes, et cetera. And uh, when we look at the solutions, there's actually a, a solution. It's uh, exercise and eating right. It's yep. not that difficult, right? Sure, mm -hmm. they, they can try and create tablets for it that will help us uh, be able to live our abusive lives, but uh, on how we look after ourselves. But if people just exercise properly every day and ate the right foods, in most cases, you'd wipe yeah. out 90% of the, the issues, right? Yeah. So, but it's not easy. 
So that's what I mean by simple, not easy. So um, that's that's what EOS is for, for business, is very simple, not easy. And, and I think what makes it easier is the work that we do with clients, kind of holding their hand through that. No different to what, a, I guess, a professional um, personal trainer would do, helping mm-hmm. with kind of fitness and health challenge. Okay. And so when you were running your own business, what were the biggest challenges you came across? Uh, I think... The, the main thing would be that lack of experience. I mean, I was 21 when I first started and I learned some great insights around what it takes to run a successful retail store. Yeah. Um, so I ran, you know, and I, I always enjoyed working with people. So I think, you know, building a team of people that enjoyed what they do, that part perhaps came easy, but managing them uh, and managing everything else that goes into running a, uh, a business like that, that was challenging. And I had no, there was no instruction manual on how to do it. It was quite, quite tough. So yeah, kind of learned the, the, the hard way of just getting in there and living and breathing it all day, every day until I got good at it. Yeah. Fantastic. So we, um, EOS, obviously a very simple system. We talk about the EOS life and what it means to live the EOS life. I know that you're, you're there, aren't you, in terms of actually living that. We'd like to share us a little bit about what that looks like, what that means. And yeah. Sure. So it's, and there's a book coming out on this soon, I think in the next 12 months, which would be great for everyone to read. But put simply, it's five things. We say doing what you love. Yes. So when we say doing what you love, I think that the takeaway there is, for me anyway, is find that thing that you enjoy doing. Now, I think some people have this romantic notion that it's going to be some uh, beautiful story, right? I don't think it's it means that, that, right, that it's going to be some easy thing. It's about just having something that you enjoy and that you're passionate about. It doesn't mean it's easy. Uh, so doing what you love. And I think the only way you'll find that is to try a few different things on, particularly in those early years of your career. Don't be afraid to, to try something different. Um, with people that you love. I'd say this is one of the most important parts. And as business owners, the people listening to this, I'd say, understand these two things. Um, We're the ones who recruit the staff members and decide whether or not to keep them on board. So surround yourself with people that you love. And when you've mastered this, it's uh, also choosing the clients that you love. That's when you know you've nailed it in life. That's one of the best things of EOS life for myself anyway. I think having that ability to choose who I work with. Mm -hmm. Um, Making a significant difference. This is an interesting one because I think most people, if you really to question them, they probably don't think that they make a significant difference every day. Uh, And it's probably because they're not reflecting on the impact of the work that they do. So even back to my first store, the IGA store, a small supermarket in in uh, the Blue Mountains, west of Sydney, kind of country area. It was uh, very quiet, a lot of elderly people. And I'd always be talking to my staff about just remember the impact that you make. Some of the people that visit our store, this is the only, this is the highlight of their day. So when you go to the extra effort of greeting them when they come in and seeing how they're doing and making sure that the music playing through the, the store is music that's going to be appropriate for them, it makes a difference. And uh, as a result, it was one of the driving factors that I think drove our success in that store. So making a significant difference is important, realizing the impact that you have. All of us have, have impact every day. Just yep. a few think of, of how big, great that is. Um, being compensated appropriately is just being paid well for what you do, but also looking beyond just the money. It's like, what else do you get in terms of compensation for what you do? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, again, if you're doing something that you enjoy, uh, it's purpose driven, including even as simple as working in a retail supermarket, it can make a difference. And with time to pursue other passions, that's one I'm still working on, open and honest. And I kind of think in life, the the thing about EOS life is it kind of goes in that sequence, right? Finding that thing that you love, doing it with people that you love. You get paid well once you've mastered something. Mm -hmm. Um, you make a more more significant difference again the more you master something the more impact that you have and then time to pursue other passions well uh that's that's not over committing on the work front and making sure that you leave time for other things and i'm I'm trying to get better at that as i go yeah i think you're doing pretty good aren't you you're doing good time with your family and whatnot which is great okay so 
how do businesses get to that sort of stage? I mean, we obviously the EOS model is designed to help them to do that. Yep. Can you just take us through, I suppose, a journey with a client? What what typically happens in that EOS process and yeah, sure. what do you do with them? Um, so it's it's a process that we've been using for two decades now, so 20 years of history and 11, more than 11,000 companies um, of all different industries. And uh, so it's, it's a system that works for basically every business out there. And we follow a, a, uh, a process that goes for approximately two years um, from the time of initial engagement through to what we'd call graduation. Mm -hmm. where you're learning and implementing a simple but highly effective set of tools into the business that helps them bring their vision. Firstly, we help them clarify what is that vision? What is it that they want? Because it varies from, from business to business, individual to individual. So getting clarity around what they want, uh, getting them all on the same page, and then giving them a set of tools that help them bring that vision into reality. And, uh, we say that we help them with three things called vision, traction, and healthy. Vision from the standpoint of simplifying, clarifying that vision. Traction from the standpoint of what I was saying, giving them the tools to succeed. And the healthy from the standpoint of creating a healthy, cohesive leadership team that can be really open and honest with one another and um, enjoy working together and confront the issues that the businesses face um, yep. on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, And graduation simply means they get to a point where they've learned these tools and they can run run independently uh, they don't need to be working with you they've kind of got this and they can continue with those great habits yeah. build a successful uh, business and life fantastic so clients that come to you why would they usually come what are their, their biggest kind of challenges that they go oh my gosh i need some help mm. it's interesting uh so some are feeling pain and they come along because maybe they're not getting what they want from their business. They might be frustrated, feeling like they've got a vision, but it's just not, not, not coming to reality. Some may, may come because they, they feel like they're not getting the, the financial reward out of it that they should. Yeah. Um, and what I'm finding, though, however, is many of them just, just uh, come along nowadays because they're referred to me from my existing client base. And... They're actually independently successful people in their own right. They're just looking and thinking, I think I could do better. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean financially. It could just mean I could create a better workplace for my team members to enjoy. And, and perhaps I could be better uh, in my market, you know, yeah. I could be even better than what we are now. So they're just, they're really open to trying on new things. They're not necessarily in pain. They just think, hey, I think I could do better and uh, I'm, I'm willing and open to, to look at EOS to help me. Yeah. I sort of liken that. I say that when my clients come to me, they're usually good businesses. We look from the outside in, they're good in terms of they're making good money, they enjoy what they're doing, but they just feel that there's something not quite, um, something missing and they could be doing better. And so they come to actually get advice about how they can take it to that next level, which is which is great. And as you said, that's not just not just financial, but it can be around, you know, having more time to do what they love, maybe, um, you know, creating a better environment, whatever it might be. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So what do you have a favorite tool in the EOS model? I always ask this question of implementers. Yeah, favorite tool. Well, funny, it's interesting because I've, I've probably just shared it. The EOS life is not necessarily a tool that we teach. It's more of an outcome of the work that we do, but it definitely is my um, my my favorite thing that I refer to. Uh, but I'd probably say the VTO, being a visionary, yep. um, you know, having a document that can capture that vision uh, and put it down into its into a simple page it's hard to believe that you could get everything that's in your head onto one one document um, and so on point uh, i've had multiple occasions when we finished the two vision building days where the founder who we you know often term the visionary gets a little teary a little emotional and says that's what i've been trying to that's what i've been trying to share all these years and I just couldn't put it into a simple form and so it helps them clarify where they want to go and the team to get united around that same vision yeah. and uh, it's th that's a pretty cool thing I use the same methodology also at home same document just for uh, planning at home too and I was going to ask you about that because I know that you do yeah <laughs> so do you have quarterly sessions with your family 
Correct. Yep. Correct. Uh, I mean, my 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 boys didn't want to attend initially, but now that they're getting to an older age, seventeen and fifteen, they're more yep. interested and in, uh, they like the, the whole planning tool because they're they're starting to see realize the power of it. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Cool. Mm. Um, I was going to ask um, in terms of the you know that making a significant difference thing. I've lost much to ask. I was just going to observe, actually. I'm, I'm down in Wellington at the moment. I'm, I'm here for a conference. And I was in a hotel yesterday and I went to get breakfast. And there was a guy who was cooking omelettes there. And I went over and he asked me what I wanted. And I told him and he very grumpily kind of went, mm, and sort of started making this omelette. He got it wrong, which was another thing. But anyway, at the end of it, it just wasn't a very pleasant experience. So I went back to my to um, to have breakfast with Steve. And I said, God, the guy making the omelettes today, he was really grumpy. And, and it made me feel really grumpy as well. And Steve said, well, it's a really boring job and it's really repetitive I said yeah but I went to Fiji a few years ago and there was a guy there who was making omelets and he was the best person I've ever met in a kitchen because he was happy he was joyful he was engaging with people um, and he would actually make my morning like every morning I'd go in and order an omelet and he was making hundreds of omelets probably boring as batshit but he would actually you know hi how you doing and have a chat to you and really engage with you and I think it may it could either make or break your morning so yesterday's morning you know like could have chosen to actually get really pissed off with it but I just moved on but it was just not a great start whereas in Fiji the guy had a, a real passion for making people's mornings yeah yeah it's and uh I think that's something that, that I was fortunate enough to learn really early on uh, you know working in a retail environment working in a service station right so yeah. gas station for the American listeners but you know <laughs> cars come in they put fuel in and they come in it's not the most exciting job in the world I quickly came to realize that it can also be a really miserable job for me or I can learn how to flip that and I guess become the Fijian omelet maker. Yeah. <laughs> I can have fun with this and, uh, you know, I can make it enjoyable. And, and like attracts like and also, you know, positive or negative energy. When you give it off, you often receive it back. And so when you do flip that and you're giving off that positive energy, it builds the same and uh, you'll find that you become, you know, very, very, pop very popular. The store did really well as a result. Yeah. We obsessed over it so much in that first store of mine that um, we had two of my staff members left in people's wills. That's oh, that's how that's yeah. how impactful we were. I mean, we were the number one store in the country, uh, and it ran off the very simple premise that my team really went above and beyond to be exactly what you just described there. Just have some fun, take an interest in the customers that were coming through and always ask them, how could I do better? How could I make that experience that little bit better? And uh, as a result, it made it fun and challenging, gave us something to do in the store rather than it being boring. Yeah. And uh, we built something really special and we genuinely loved working there. It was a really enjoyable experience. The, the customers enjoyed it. Uh, and valued it and, and so did my team members it was a two-way street so how do you instill that kind of um, behavior into the team what, what's the sort of the, the magic tool that you use to get them all on that same page and deliver that excellent service I think it's it really comes down to this thing of mindset you know it's the way that you think about things whatever the task might be I remember when I first started in retail part of the 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 job was the cleaning. I had to clean bathrooms, I had to clean toilets, I had to mop the floors. And I could either look at that as a real negative or I could think, I just want to have the best floor and the cleanest toilet yep. that's ever existed. And so that's what I did. And I kind of took that same philosophy through to everything that it did um, throughout, throughout my business life. And I used to say that, share the same thing with the team. We can come in here and be miserable for the entire shift, or you can have some fun here and try and be the best. Um, yeah. There's an art form to everything, even mopping the floor. There is an art to it, right? Because you got to do it quick. you got to be make it clean. And in a retail environment, the challenge that you've got is people are constantly coming back in every, you know, every, every five minutes and they're messing it back up. <laughs> and if it's too wet, people are going to slip over. Yep. So how's that for ironic? So you have to get the water really hot. Yes. And then it basically, uh, you know, dries pretty, pretty damn quick too. So even now, all these years later, I remember the art form. I've mopped many floors in my life. That's awesome. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it also comes back to that kind of core values as well, though, in the people that you employ, like employing the right people in your business as well, I'm assuming. So in IGA, how did you pick the right people? What would, what would that look like? Yeah, um, well, it was interesting. The first three staff members that I had, um, two were straight out of high school, so it was their first job. And the other was at the end of her career. So she'd had a career um, working in many different different fields, mostly retail and uh, working in a chemist. She wanted something closer to home. She'd moved up to Blackheath in the Blue Mountains. And so she came in and uh, and so we had a really diverse workforce. There is There was no secret. She, we, we loved having Leslie because she could teach us many things because we were the young ones. I mean, I was 21, the other two were 18. Yep. And she would have been in her early 60s and she was a gem. But I think we also bought the energy so we, we all contributed in our own way and uh, it made for a, a great team and we built from there. So getting that culture right and the mindset right is a big thing. And you need to take the time to coach your, your team members. I mean, my, my simple philosophy is, okay, so mopping the floor and cleaning the toilets or flipping the, the omelets, it's not such a big job, right? Not such an important thing. So tell me then, what, when do you perceive that your job's going to be important? At what point in your career is what you do important? Is it when you start managing somebody? That's when you'll take your role seriously. And I mean, at what point does it become important? And the reality, the answer to that question is everything's important. Yeah. Because if the bathrooms aren't clean or the, the shelves aren't stacked properly or you don't speak uh, nicely to the customers and greet them hello and say goodbye and these things, then then nothing, you can do everything else at the top end. You can have the best accounting system in the world, but if you're being a jerk at the front counter, your you store will never succeed. Yeah. So at what point do you take it seriously? I think you should take it seriously right from the entry point. Mopping the floor is where it starts. Yeah. And then that comes down to, as a leader, being a good communicator too, right? So having those conversations regularly with your team and making sure they are all on the same page. Yeah. Right. And being patient particularly with young staff members. Nowadays, uh, one of the things that I'm observing is teenagers don't have jobs the way we used to. Mm -hmm. uh, makes me sound old, but uh, back in our day, right, uh, it was very normal to get a job when you were 13 or 14 years old. So by the time you actually entered the, the full-time workforce, you had four years, five years under your belt of being in a work environment. A lot of the time nowadays, kids, you know, we, we have, we're in a different economic time. They just don't have the, the, you know, parents look after them. They don't really have the same requirements. And what we're missing is the true value of, of them working at a younger age. So just be, be uh, mindful that some of them even go straight to uni then. And they still, you know, they don't even well, have much a more to do in life. <laughs> years old, yeah. And it's like, you need to be respectful that they just they don't get some of the very basic things. So you need to take a little time um, just to help them, guide them through, and teach them some real one hundred and one things. Uh, yeah. Don't assume that they've learnt those lessons yet in life, and don't assume that they don't want to know. I think that's that's false. Right. It's not fair. You know, sometimes I hear people say, "Oh, the young ones don't want to work anymore," and I think, well, no, I think that's a real generalization and, and not fair. And they just don't know, do they? They just don't know what they're sort of missing out on, a bit like a battery, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, inspire them. Inspire them to see things they haven't yet seen. That's the joy of work. Perfect. So let's just say um, a business owner is going, yep, you know what, I want that EOS life. I want to be doing what I love with people I love, making a huge difference, being compensated appropriately and having time to pursue other things. Mm. Where would they get started? What would be their sort of the three tips you would give them to get them started on that journey? Um, I think, well, firstly, read the book Traction, uh, you know, get that, get, get that book read. Uh, that's where it all changed for me. Um, if you're too busy for that, which many people listening to this will fall into that bucket, they'll say, well, that's great. I will at some point just um, contact one of the implementer community, reach out to one of the EOS implementers and ask them for a chat. Um, and, you know, book in a 90 minute meeting. So where you can go along and hear about EOS live. So for some people that's better and more convenient than reading the book yep. and uh, just get started. I kind of, I kind of uh, thought about 
these lessons prior to today because you'd given me the heads up that, you know, what, would, what are some insights? And these are the things that I thought. Yep. Number one is try things, you know, to find something that you enjoy in life. I think too many people are fearful for change. Just try different things on and see what, 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 her, what happens. Um, respect that it takes time to master something whatever it is, be it a trade, a profession, a skill of any description, it's going to take uh, commitment, right, to get great at something. And the same applies for running a business. It takes time to learn the skill of running a business. So when you think that you spend four or five years doing, you know, a university degree or a trade, uh, your apprenticeship, and then it takes another four or five years to get actually really good at that skill. So it's a decade. Appreciate that going and registering a business doesn't make you a successful business owner. You need to learn the craft of running a business. So EOS is designed to just help you on that journey to run the business more successfully. And the final point I would say there is being World Cup Day today, the World Cup yes. finals. I thought it would be appropriate to uh, share this take on life that I have. And, and that is you can't score a goal from the sideline. You need to actually get on the field and have a go. Um, and I often see too many people sitting on the sideline, either critiquing everyone else or criticizing everyone else in a negative way, or they're sitting there reading too many books, going to too many conferences. Yeah. They, just, they, they read, they, they, they do too, too much education and they just don't, don't realize until you get out there and kick that ball, you've got no, no chance. It's impossible to try and uh, score a goal. So get out there and have a go um, and know that, you know, from a business perspective, EOS is a fantastic start to help you understand the craft of running a business. Um, so just do something, uh, yeah. get started. Yeah. Get That's started. A great, yeah. great, uh, great, great opportunity right there. Yeah, I love it. I think one of the reasons that I fell in love with EOS, apart from yourself and Fran and the, the values that EOS has, was that it was, for me, I have read lots of books and I have done the MBA and I've done all of that stuff and I've also run a business. But I, I love that it took all of that knowledge and really brought it down into a very, very simple model. And and I think you're absolutely right. We can almost get like a paralyzed, was it analysis by paralysis or paralysis yeah. by analysis, one of those, um, where you basically, you know, you can just keep reading and reading and there's so much stuff out there. But when you take it back to its absolute core basics that's what eos is it's the simplicity of the the really yeah basic yeah. stuff that the business needs yeah 100 it's it's uh phenomenal the statistics that i see so for all the uh listeners out there worried about their kids in school who are mucking up and uh being difficult um, here's some statistics to take away i would say somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the companies that I've worked with, the founder uh, or founders have been the ones who were mucking up at school. They didn't fit in. They didn't find school easy. They had learning issues, et cetera. And then they've gone out to the workplace and uh, they've dominated. And interestingly, the rest of the leadership team are the educated people who beat them in school. <laughs> so, uh, and then they ended up working for the, for the person who wasn't so great at school. Uh, and, I, and I think that Part of the reason of that is some of the founders are just, they're street smart, but they're not necessarily book smart. They've, they're not the ones with the great education. And, and I think uh, what, I, what I see is um, they can't see the dangers. When, when people go to uni, they, re, they actually realize all of the dangers associated with running a business. They know the failure rate uh, and they know the statistics and that makes them, like you say, yeah. paralyzed to think, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Yep. Whereas uh, some of these founders, I think most of them just blindly go in thinking, yeah, I'll be okay. And they have no idea what they're about to embark on, but they think that they'll be fine. And yep. uh, thankfully, uh, if, if they're working with uh, one of us, they tend to work out that way statistically. Yep. Uh, it's pretty much 100% success rate. So we hit out the crazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Brilliant. Okay, Dan, um, uh, we're kind of getting to the end of the, the session. I just want to thank you so much for sharing all that stuff with us. In terms of the clients that you love to work with, what does your ideal client look like and how would they get in contact with you? Uh, I love to work with clients. Primarily, I love to work with clients that have been referred to me. 
uh, from uh, from my existing. If I if I'm open and honest, um, I've become a little bit spoiled like that, and that is because like attracts like. It's what I shared earlier, right? So great people tend to know other great people who are values aligned. Mm -hmm. um, that's my first uh, port of call. But people who are passionate about what they do and they genuinely want to build a business that has a positive impact um, on its customers and for its people. If, you, if you're just coming to me because you want to increase that bottom line and that's your obsession, I just don't really have uh, any interest. To me, that's a byproduct of getting the other two things right. When you've got customers that love you and a team that loves you, yep. the rest of the things tend, tend to fall into place. And so uh, passion-driven people is, is what I typically like to work with. Perfect. And, and if they wanted to get, someone wanted to get hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, LinkedIn is probably the easiest way. Um, so they can just search me up, Daniel Davis on uh, LinkedIn, Sydney, yeah. Australia. There's probably a lot of those, actually. I was going to say, you must be got a few of those, yeah. <laughs> so just put in uh, EOS implementer, something like that, and I'm sure they'll find me, uh, the bold guy. Yeah. Or well, otherwise, just reach out to you, Deb. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah. <laughs> just one last question for you. Your sons, what do you think your sons are going to end up doing? I'm quite fascinated because they've obviously been brought up in a very entrepreneurial family and with the EOS life um, and the VTO. Yeah. Good question. They, and they really have because our, our entire family, pretty much uh, my extended family, all run their own businesses too. So um, very, very entrepreneurial business uh, business uh, family. And um, the, the they both... Uh, the two oldest ones basically are looking to go and get trades at the moment. So, yeah, they're talking about plumbing and uh, the other one uh, being in carpentry. So um, they love the idea of being able to run their own business and they look at it as something that's not going to be heavily impacted by technology and it helps people and ticks, ticks the boxes. And they're pretty active, active guys. They like the idea of uh, having something different every day. So that's, yeah. Uh, after all those private school fees that I've paid, they're going into uh, to do a trade. And uh, as as they both have wisely responded to me, it wasn't their choice to uh, go through the private system. You wasted money. You should have bought us a property. And I'm like, okay, you don't get it all right. And they were spot on. So the third one will, will not be going to private school. <laughs> Oh, no, that's brilliant. Hey, look, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, look forward to catching up with you again. Hopefully once these borders get themselves opened and we get things back under control. But in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you online. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Great to, thank you much, to keep joining you.